I want to stop on this slide a bit and talk. This is information I want to provide that relates to your scoping comments. Uh, a couple of things are, first, there are a number of organizations and people who are represented here by those organizations that have already provided letters to the agencies. I receive the letters, the governor receives the letters, our agency director has received the letters, as well as at the county and the core. These letters have been really well crafted, really well thought out, and they are for all technical purposes, scoping letters. They are saying, agencies, we want you to look at A, B, C, and D, whether it's rail impacts, greenhouse gases, wetland impacts, stormwater. We have received a number of those from jurisdictions, from individuals, and from groups. What I want to say about scoping is that you saw from that timeline there is a set sequence of steps and it is critical that the agencies follow those steps in the exact regulatory order that they are defined. We, we can't get ahead of ourselves. So what I'm suggesting to those organizations, Whatcom Docs, you can see a couple of representatives there, those letters make sure to resubmit to us at the scoping period because then, they, then and only then are they considered formal scoping comments. So I want people that have already done some of that to please keep that in mind, resubmit it to us, put a cover letter on it so that it's considered one of the formal scoping comments. The other thing I will say is some of you may have come to this meeting wanting to tell us about concerns, specific concerns you have about the project and what worries you about it, what should or shouldn't be done about it, those are scoping comments. So when we have our Q&A portion of this workshop, it will be very important for you to recognize that we need questions from you so the whole audience benefits about scoping and the environmental review process. The comments that are specific about your concerns are scoping comments. We value them. They come later. They come when scoping opens. So I just really want to emphasize that. I don't want anybody put off by that if we go, hey, that's a scoping comment. So that's why I'm emphasizing that, because we're, we need to follow the steps in order. So that's just one thing I really wanted to emphasize when we get to the Q&A. So, next slide. A little. Let me think if there's anything else that I want to add about the, okay, the kinds of comments. Specific is good. If you can be more specific, the better. Uh, vague comments, we take them into account. We take every comment that comes in very seriously. But if you can be specific, that is very helpful to us. If there's a certain geographic area that you, need, that you feel needs to be covered related to a specific concern, let us know. Um, comment letters that are um, petitions, that are all the same, they count, they're important, but the ones that have specificity give us guidance on what to put into that environmental impact statement, what should be included. Group. Comment letters are great. You know, if you're part of a group, you represent a number of people, they can be submitted representing your group or individuals. Also, we know that some of you are lay people. This may be the first time you've even heard much about EIS. Don't let that inhibit you or uh, prevent you from submitting your comments of concerns. We know there are going to be people all the way from not having a lot of knowledge to people who are experts. This is their professional area of expertise, lawyers, health uh, administrators, etc. So we take all of these very seriously. They will be reviewed by all three co-lead agencies um, to determine the scope. After scoping, all right. After that comment period, all of those are going to be collected. 
They are going to be carefully reviewed. They will each get attention by all three co-lead agencies. You don't have to send them to all three of us. I think they go to Tyler. Do they go to Tyler? Tyler will collect those. Um, and we will go over them. The co-leads, we're doing, going to do an optional step. Because this project is so important to so many people, this isn't required, but we're going to put out a scoping report. And that will basically summarize, here's the kinds of things we've been he hearing, um, some other um, information in it. And I, I don't know what all those components are. That's why I, I, I'll probably have to look to my um, co-lead um, compatriots to identify that perhaps more in the Q&A. And then the agencies decide the scope of the EIS. We take all that input from the tribes, from other agencies, from you, and decide the scope. I do want to tell you also that we're coordinating very closely with other agencies. I've already met with a number, probably 10 different uh, state agencies that have a piece of expertise related to transportation impacts, related to uh, cultural resources, et cetera. They are very well clued into the importance of uh, providing comments and their expertise to the agencies. So, I covered NEPA SEPA 101, where we're at in the process, what the sequencing is, what a rough timeline might be, what triggers scoping, and how you can most effectively comment. And then uh, up to where we issue the draft EIS. So Tyler, as uh, my compatriot here, um, will cover what happens after that step.